Good evening, gang. David Guppel, Thinker Farmer here. It's the 4th of July, 2025. I'm here at the Archwood Farms with the Stalker Herd, and uh, I'm here in the transition field. That's the cedar line that we had uh, stalkers bed down in, uh, oh, I guess that's five months ago now during an ice storm. And we're using a portable tank right now. And just a little bit of context for the season. I want to go over some uh, some how-to stuff, kind of look at some R&D of uh, something my manager Todd Mead came up with for our tank. But uh, where we are in the season right now, it feels like spring flush has not ended. We had uh, close to 10 inches of rain in May, another mm, around eight inches in June. So we've just had a ton of rain and rather than the forage drying out, we do have seed heads from early April, or rather I say early April, early spring, because it was really dry early spring. And so the cool season seeded out, but we went around grazing the farm. And if you look down into the canopy now, we have a, a lot of cool seasons that are still mostly green. Um, a lot of clover, uh, the farm and also uh, I was looking at a patch of warm seasons let's see that was right over here we've also got a lot of Johnson grass over the farm in some other fields they are heavily dominated with uh, or at least visually they're dominated with Johnson grass um, so right now we're we're grazing at a pretty high uh, pretty high height we're uh, doing a low utilization I'm trying to take the top energy because the forage is pretty washy. And uh, we weaned this past week, so we'll have 70 to 80 uh, steers coming. So at that point, and probably reality is, we haven't had rain the rat last few days, which has been really nice. We need some sunshine to grow, uh, really to, to grow sugar in our plants because right now they're mostly water. And, uh, but anyway, we're probably gonna start utilizing more forage as, uh, as now really we're into summer. And uh, anyway, that's, that's kind of where we are utilization wise. We're doing daily moves with our stalker herd. They're looking really good. Um, probably look at them shortly. I wanted to take a few minutes in this video and just discuss some R&D. Um, one of the things uh, we love to use these portable uh, stock tanks to move fertility around on the farm our uh, water point it's going to be hard to see but essentially on the yeah i'm going to step over the line our water point is about 50 no more than 50. i guess it's 100 foot 100 feet that direction and so we've got garden hose strung out and one of the things that has been a pain with these water tanks this is a 150 gallon tank we're watering uh i mean in animal units i forget what our animal units are i've been i've been just eyeballing things in the field in terms of the utilizations i i want we've got mm, 110 ish animal units um 125 they're, the stalkers right now are, uh, they're a pretty good sized stalker. Um, some of them are nine weights, visually looking at them. I think the majority are probably, probably seven weights. So anyway, we've got, uh, yeah, prob probably a little, little over a hundred animal units right now. And, uh, I go ahead, of course, and run a poly wire over the top, limit them so that really only a few head can drink at a time because of our uh, recharge rate. Um, it's, I mean, pressure-wise, we've probably got 30, 35 PSI, so not really high. And the, uh, <coughs> pardon me, gang, uh, I'm getting over some sinus stuff. So the uh, normally I've been uh, just packing this tank around on the four-wheeler, which can be a bit of a pain and my manager uh todd mead uh went ahead and said let's see what we can do to make this easier so we took an old gate um jeff kind of our shop uh welder metal guy he went ahead and uh cut it to fit for the tank 
and then he went ahead and welded on the side of the tank. He went ahead and welded, uh, see if I can get in there, in there where you can see. He went ahead and welded a couple of uh, chain pieces on either side to the gate. And then uh, went ahead and put in a, we went ahead and put in a ratchet strap, hooked it in on both ends, and then you cinch it up into a wooden board, which we actually had another piece that uh, we screwed underneath here so that when you cinch it up, it, it, it uh, essentially locks the tank in so that an animal can't put its uh, neck down and push on the tank. It essentially becomes a brace Note, note the indents here. That's so that the strap can't really slide. We cut, cut indents in our wooden board. We've been using this tank now more than a month, and it's 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 really nice to drag around in the field. Um, it definitely makes a big difference in terms of uh, the the tank won't give, and even with the uh, like I said, we had two boards here another board underneath that was screwed to the top one to lock it in that board on the bottom actually fell out today and uh i we've had so many things going on on the farm i really have not had the time between weaning hay hauling um storing for winter and other things i really haven't had the time to be fixing it but it's functioning just the same so i don't know if i even need to get another board and uh, essentially that strap locks the tank in place. And then, uh, let me step over this hot line. Our wires, are, you've been seven, 8,000 volts, so I really don't want to get that. On the other side, we have a, uh, I love how resourceful our welder Jeff is. He didn't even want to waste a hook. He took an old piece of rebar and he, uh, let's see, that's about, an eight inch piece, he bent it in the center and then welded it. And you can slip a chain in there. You don't even really need a hook on the chain. The chain will actually pull in and lock in that tip. And then I just hook it up to a four wheeler short so that when you pull, it actually picks up the front end to go over rocks and little divots. And I can drag this around the field instead of packing it around. Really, really simple. Um, and uh, yeah, the stalkers enjoy it, works great. Um, anyway, so that that probably was kind of the thing I wanted to show in this video. Little bitty things like that, R&D, they don't, uh, I don't know that they save you tons of time, but they make your life so much easier. And uh, man, there, there, there's enough in life that is hard. Um, it really, I, I think making things easier, making it where somebody else can do the job. You know, I can, I'm, I'm a decent sized guy. I can pack around a, a pretty uh, hefty tank on the back of our really nice four wheelers. But you ask somebody else to do that, yeah, that's just making life harder for them. Finding ways to make life easier is just a really good thing. So anyway, uh, back to grazing, back to the stalker cattle. I uh, actually raced the cattle ahead. That's a nice flock of birds there. They've been doing our fly control for the cattle. That and uh, moving them a long distance. <clears throat> moving, moving the cattle a, a long distance, which to me means at least more than 200 yards, if not three or 400, keeping them from their uh, manure piles so that when the flies do hatch out, they can't find their host or the, the cattle. And uh, yeah, that stalker's just looking at me. He thinks I'm a nut. I'm just talking about grass, buddy. Anyway, um, right now for beginning of July, the fly pressure is not that great and I'm attributing it to our our feathered friends, the birds, and then also to just the animals being in pretty good condition, so they're healthy, and they're, they're, most of them are slicked off, some of them are not. Um, you know, all of, our, all of our animals at this point in this group are gonna be burger at some point. But uh, 
man, that 2160, that stalker's a little bit wild running through the group like that. That 2160 right there uh, at my 12 o'clock, she's already flat on top. Um, yeah, her side's pooched out. She's pretty full. Um, but the stalker cattle are pretty pretty good shape and condition right now. I feel really comfortable going into summer. I'm eager to see what their weights are going to be. We we gave up some gains this spring because of how dry it was. And uh, I, I didn't want to get ahead of things with uh, and graze blunt tips. So we will, we will see how things go um, progressing into the season. And uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful 4th of July. Happy Independence Day, gang. I hope you uh, take the time, eat a, eat a burger. Thank God for the country that we get to live in where we, we have the freedom to to really pursue these amazing, amazing, just amazing, I would call it a more than a vocation, a, uh, a calling to these, these missions of land regeneration and whatnot. Each person has a different thing, but it is great to be in the good old USA. And with that, blessings for the journey, gang, and keep it real.